In the first video, we had set up a very basic simple authentication runner, which basically uh, redirected the user to the GitHub authentication page once they spin up their local uh, host. Let's see what we had built in the previous video and then we can move on with what we are going to build next. So here I have a very basic uh, OAuth runner. We have an index which we had used in the previous video where we have our OAuth uh, application running. We have a container and we also have the runner Spring Boot and we also have the application.yaml which has the client secret and the client ID from GitHub. So if you haven't seen the previous video, I would really highly recommend you to see the first video. The link is also in the description below. Now, now that we have our authentication running, always make sure that you're running your um, Spring Boot application or your local host on an incognito web page so that there is no cookie and you are not automatically you know, logged in into GitHub. So just make sure that you're always running it in, uh, in a incognito window. So let's have a new private window for us. And here we'll start running our application. So we have localhost 8080. And as we open that, we are automatically re redirected to GitHub here. And then you can put in your information, hit sign in. And once you are authenticated, you will be sent back to the local host and you will be displayed as Spring Boot OAuth application. So this is what we had built in our previous video where we had a simple application. And now in this video, we'll start adding features to this particular you know, web, web application that we have. So now that you see, we only are redirected once we just log in or spin up the application. How about we give user a choice or a conditional choice where they can then decide if they want to log in via GitHub or not and then show them the uh, name back. So for example, my name is Ronak and if I want to log into GitHub, I just have a button which says click here to log into GitHub. When I log in, it shows me that I have been logged in as Ronak Vyas with my GitHub user information. So let's uh, start adding features into our application so that we can build that. So how are we going to do this? So in this video, we'll modify the simple application that we have and we'll do that by adding an explicit link to login with GitHub. Instead of being redirected immediately, the new link will be visible on the home page. The user can choose to log in or stay unauthenticated. So they have two options. Only when the user has clicked on the link uh, with the secure content be rendered. So this is called as conditional content and we'll be doing that on the home page, which is the index.html. Now to render content uh, on the condition that the user is authenticated, you have the option of doing it at the server side uh, using Spring Boot and Java or on the client side using jQuery. In this video, we'll be doing it in jQuery, but you can easily uh, refactor the code for any of your uh, JavaScript libraries such as React or Angular. So let's start and let's see how we can uh, build this. So we have our application here, we have the login. So let's change this to uh, video two. So all we can do is have a login page, which gives you the choice to log in or not using GitHub. And we'll say conditional. Yep, great. And now, we can add our stuff here. So let's have a body. So we have the body ready. Now we have the container and let's have two divs now. So first div is going to be unauthenticated. And this one will have uh, via GitHub. So GitHub. And here we have an A tag which links to the URL which we use inside GitHub, which is going to be slash OAuth to slash authorization slash GitHub. Not GitHub, GitHub. So whenever the user clicks this particular uh, button to click here, they will be redirected to the slash OAuth slash authorization slash GitHub URL. And this is basically where we then uh, hit the GitHub server and we start the authorization, authorization process. So now let's see how we can uh, demonstrate conditional content. So this is a one div which we have. So let's make sure that the everything inside body is 
indented let's have another div and here we'll be having another uh, class so let's have a class container this is going to be authenticated and using these two uh, sets of classes we'll be showing the content and let's first uh, not display it. so we'll do display none so it is hidden first and we will not be able to see this and this will basically say logged in as and this is going to be a span and this is going to be having an id of user so we have id it's going to be user so this is currently empty but we'll be using jquery to actually fill this particular span so let's start writing the script for that so everything jquery goes inside script inside html make sure that the script is of type text slash javascript so that is what we are implementing right now and let's uh, write some very simple jquery which just fetches everything that we want the data of the uh, basically the name of the person who has been authenticated using github and then we can uh, move ahead from there so we have dollar get and let's say we have slash user which is basically how we get our info back we'll be implementing the slash user endpoint in a minute and then we have a function the function is going to have a uh, data in it so we'll be using the data and now let's start implementing things inside here so inside data we are going to have we'll be using jquery again and what we tell jquery is that whenever you find the id user take the dot html and add data dot name inside that that is something that is the first thing we should do that we make sure that we uh, fill the span with the name which we get back from github the next thing what we do is we take up unauthenticated so what we tell jquery is that take the class unauthenticated and hide it so this div is hidden once we log in once we get data back from github and the next thing what we do is the same thing but we show authentication so dot authenticated and all we have to do is dot show so we don't need semicolons here we can work without them as well and this is basically how we have conditional content on our html page using client side jquery so what is happening here let's go uh, step by step again we have two divs one div is unauthenticated the other one is authenticated the authenticated div is initially displayed as none so we don't see this initially we just see login via github click here once we click here and we uh, are redirect redirected back to our uh, local application we get a data back from github uh, using the endpoint slash user we will be implementing this in a minute once we get the data back we fill the span with the data name we hide an authenticated div and we show the div which is authenticated so this is our client side code which we will be using uh, to make sure that uh, we have everything set up ready from the client side the next part is running the server side code so the slash user endpoint now we'll be adding the server endpoint that we just mentioned calling it slash user it will send back the currently logged in user which we can quite easily do so in our main oauth runner class so let's see how we do that so first we'll be adding a rest controller here so if you're not familiar with rest controllers please watch the rest api playlist uh, from uh, using spring boot in the programming knowledge channel and the link will also be in the description below we will call this a rest application we will have a get mapping the get mapping will be for as you expected slash user and this is going to be for another method that we have it's going to be public return a map of string and object and let's make sure that we have the map imported from util and this is going to be called user now inside this we will be having a lot of things so we'll talk about that in a minute let me just implement it first so we have authentic 
application principle. We have O auth to user. Let's call it the principle. Yep. The next thing which we need to do is implement it. So we get the data in principle, and now we need to return back the name from the principal object. So we do return collections, not an empty map. We go with single in map and we have the name, the key as the name and the value is going to be principal dot get attribute and we get back the name. This is the endpoint which we call back. So let's talk about what's happening here. So here what we're doing is we make sure that whenever we hit the slash user endpoint uh, here, we get the OAuth user which we currently have at that time. So your GitHub, uh, your GitHub user, and we get back the name of the user from that, and we put that in a map, and we then access the key of the map from the value, so we access the value calling data.name. So this is the name that we have and we call data.name and we get back the principal.getAttribute. So this is how we get back our name from the OAuth user. And the last thing that we need to do here is make sure that uh, our application or the home page is public. So this is the one final change that we need to make. The app will work fine now and authenticate as before, but still going to redirect before showing the page. To make the link visible, we also need to switch off the security on home page by extending web security configurer adapter. So let's say what we mean by that. So let's actually add that. First, we extend our application, so extends web security configurer adapter. So we'll be extending this and let's actually write our function. So we override protected wide configure and we have HTTP security, it's called HTTP. This throws exception. Uh, Let's implement it. So we don't have to implement it. We have it uh, right here from the Spring Docs, which we are following. So let me just get it right from there. And we'll just talk about what it's doing. And let's in import all the classes that we want. Make sure that we have everything ready. Uh, let's clean it up a bit. Just to make sure that everything looks good. looks about right. So let's talk about what's happening here. So Spring Boot attaches special meaning to a web security configure adapter on the class annotated with Spring Boot application right here. It uses it to configure the security filter chain that carries the OR to authentication processor. Now the above configuration indicates a white list of permitted endpoints. So these endpoints are permitted and they will not be uh, secure and we can always access it. So how are we doing it? So we want to allow slash since that the page you just made dynamic with some of its content visible to unauthenticated users. So as you see, this is unauthenticated and we want the user to see it. So we need to make sure that this is also permitted by the web security configurer adapter. Next is the slash error since that's a spring boot uh, endpoint for displaying errors and slash web jars. Uh, since you'll want a JavaScript to run for all visitors, authenticated or not. Now, you won't see anything about slash user in this configuration, though everything including slash user remains secure unless indicated by this particular request. So we only give slash the permit. We don't give slash user the permit because that is where your auth authorization is happening. We just want to make sure that the unauthenticated, unauthenticated user can see slash. Now, finally, since we're interfacing uh, with the backend over Ajax, we want to configure the endpoints to respond with a 401 uh, instead of that. We make sure that the authentication entry point is also unauthorized. 
with those changes in place, the application is complete. And when we run it and visit the home page, we should see a very simple basic HTML which says login via GitHub. The link takes you not directly to GitHub, but to the local path that process the authentication, which is slash user. Once you're authenticated, you will be redirected back to the home page where it displays the name. Displays the name. So let's run this and see how we have worked. Just to make sure that we are doing it correctly, we have extended web security, we have our slash user endpoint. We have implemented everything that we need and we should be good to go. So let's make sure that we are and let's run this. We have the server up and it started running. Everything looks good. Let's open a private window. Very important, no cookies. It'll be easy to see what's happening. Open 8080. And as you can see, the HTML is not perfect, but we can always update that. And we have via GitHub click here. When we click here, we are re redirected to this with our client ID, which I have in my application.yaml, which we had in the previous video. We give our inputs, we sign in. And when we sign in, we get back to our local application with our name. So logged in as non affairs. So this is how you have a welcome page and a conditional content in your home page. In the next video, we'll add a logout button and we'll take it there and we'll also start building up our fully authenticated OAuth2 application using Spring Boot and GitHub. If you have any questions, please add them into the comments and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.